If you currently work in radio or if you have a background in radio, will that make the transition to voiceover easier or more difficult because of some bad habits that you may have? That is the question that we're going to be talking about today on the podcast. Welcome back to the Voice Acting 101 podcast. This is episode number 23. I'm Jason, and I hope you're doing well. Uh, This is where I try to answer your voiceover question in the least amount of time as possible. So let's jump right into today's question, which uh, comes from Michael. Hey, Jason. It's Michael from Honolulu, Hawaii. Aloha. I've had this question for a while now. Um, Long time in radio, decades in radio, behind the mic, on the air, and in the production room. And I've been wondering... What are the things that radio people like me need to unlearn in order to make for a good transition into the voiceover world? Thanks. All right. Thanks for sending in your question, Michael. Just hearing about Hawaii takes me back to a time when my family and I visited Hawaii. It was a great time. Beautiful out there. I'm sure it's another beautiful day there today. Uh, But a lot of great memories from going out there, from snorkeling at the beach, uh, the painted forest, uh, eating fresh pineapple on a pineapple tour. Uh, So it's great to hear from you, and I hope you're doing well. All right, so let's get into your question. So radio is how I started in voiceover many years ago. I first uh, did some radio imaging liners for a couple online radio stations, and then I went and I started an internship at a local radio station. From there, I became production manager and program director and operations manager, and I enjoyed my time in radio, but like anyone in radio can probably relate, there are some aspects of it that are not as much fun. Uh, And that's when I started talking to our voice guy that we were using at that time. And I learned that he was working for dozens of stations around the world from his home studio. So that's when I thought about making the transition from working at the local radio station to then doing voiceover for a few radio stations around the U.S. So I made that transition from radio to voiceover myself. So first off, before we get into what to unlearn from the radio background, I just want to mention that having that radio background, having that experience is very valuable to you in voiceover. I know some people are going to say that it makes it harder to move into voiceover, and there are some differences between the two, but there are a lot of similarities between working in radio and then moving to voiceover. So, for example, if you have a background in radio, most likely you already have the technical aspects mastered. So that's something that you're not even going to have to struggle with. That's going to be a benefit for you, like good mic technique. Uh, You know about plosives and not speaking directly into a microphone. You're also used to hearing your own voice, which can be a shock to some people when they first get on the microphone. It can just uh, surprise them and they don't think that they sound that way. You've already got experience doing that if you have a radio background. You also have experience reading scripts, whether it's for on-air promos or commercials. And uh, maybe the most valuable thing about having a radio background is that you already know how to record and edit and produce voiceover. So you're familiar with uh, the recording and editing software that you're going to use Uh, for a voiceover career. So all these skills can carry over and there is no doubt that they are going to help you in voiceover. And I would even say that most of your radio experience is going to help you in one way or another. There are just a couple subtle differences between radio and voiceover and it mostly comes down to how you read the scripts or your performance. And not everyone coming from radio is going to experience these differences uh, the same way because you've been trained and you've been working in a certain way But these seem to be a couple of the most common that happen for those people that make the transition. So the first difference or the thing to unlearn, as Michael said, if you're moving from radio to voiceover, is to stop announcing. So I would describe announcing as loud, exciting, projecting, generic, and basically where your voice doesn't match what the script is saying. It could kind of be used for any script. It doesn't matter what the script was talking about. It's the same delivery no matter what. If you've been working in radio for any amount of time, you've probably become really skilled at being able to talk and read at the same time. Uh, Usually if you're on the air, you have copy points. So you get to say it kind of how you want to say it, but you have points that you're supposed to hit. So you're reading and you're talking at the same time. Uh, And typically in radio, everything that you're going to do is going to be big or exciting or you're building it up. If you ever listen to the radio, it's always fun and it's it's a good mood. It works great in radio. You know, no one wants to listen to a Debbie Downer to get them through their workday. So it works great for radio, but that excitement, it's also used to mask that you're actually reading. So it's kind of like a magic show. If we emphasize and we elongate words and we change inflection, it's a way that we found that we can hide the fact that we're reading. So it doesn't sound like we're reading as much. 
And it's just a trick that some radio people pick up, so that's one habit that you'll want to break. Uh, some people get in the habit of getting loud and projecting their voice, and that's going to turn into talking at your audience instead of talking with your audience. And if you ever listen to like an entire commercial break with a, on a local radio station, you may notice that all the commercials can end up sounding like one long commercial. The music is going to change and the voices may even change, but all the voices have the same tone. They've got the same pacing. They've got the same inflection, same cadence. You know, there's no emotional connection uh, with the voice and the script. It's just reading the lines to get through it as quickly as possible. So the difference here is that in voiceover, not everything is going to be read in that same announcer read style. It shouldn't be done in radio either, but it's common because uh, in radio, there are a few people who wear a lot of hats, and uh, so they're doing a lot of jobs, and the clients don't usually know the difference or care that much. They just want their words to be on the radio. But in voiceover, you know, even the direction you see on jobs, sometimes it'll say non-announcer. So this means that you're going to need to take the time to look at the script and figure out what the message is and what emotions are called for. And you can check out episode number 22 if you would like more information on script interpretation. All right, the second difference between radio and voiceover is speed. So in radio, you may pick up the habit of talking fast. If you're on the air, it's a way to keep the excitement going or you're leading into a song. Or if you're doing a commercial, the salespeople are usually working directly with the clients and they want to have everything included in their script. So the script ends up being longer than the time that you have. So in order to get it all in, you have to talk really fast. But in voiceover, and this depends on the client you're working with, but it's usually larger clients who have hired some kind of marketing or ad agency or some kind of a production house. And because more people are involved, the writing style ends up sounding different. So the script has probably been reviewed and edited by not only the client, but a writer, a director, a producer, who knows who else, but it's been revised and fine-tuned by the time that you see it. So their priority isn't to get as many words in as little time as possible. Instead, it's about the message itself. So they leave breathing room in the script for the voice actor to make sure that the message comes across. So speed reads aren't called for as often in voiceover. They still happen from time to time, but for the most part, that's going to leave room for you to have the emotion and the pauses and for the story to unfold. And this is also one of the reasons why you want to make sure that you're using professionally written copy on your voiceover demos, where if you've uh, maybe you've been in radio and you've done some commercials, instead of including those commercials, those commercials were probably written differently uh, than what someone is going to be expecting from a voiceover actor. So you don't want to be using local scripts or sample scripts on your demo. You want to have professionally written scripts uh, to use for your demo. The third thing to consider between working in radio and voiceover is your accent. So radio is usually local or regional to a specific area. So if you have an accent and you're on the radio and all your listeners have that accent, your voice is going to fit perfectly for the audience within that market. But in voiceover, since it can be used anywhere in the world, really, you, if you have that thick localized accent, it could potentially limit which jobs you're hired for. Not definitely, but potentially limit the jobs that you're hired for. Thankfully, more and more jobs are considering all kinds of voices and accents, uh, but many are still leaning toward accents that aren't as strong. So if you have a really thick accent, it's just something to consider, you know, if you're in a market known for its thick accent. And all of this can slightly vary depending on the niche that you're working in, but the main takeaway to consider when moving from radio to voiceover is that radio and voiceover both want to grab attention. That's kind of the goal of both of them. Radio tends to do that through hype and excitement, and voiceover usually does it through emotions and stories. Okay, that's it for this episode. I hope this has helped you. If you've gone from radio to voiceover, what's something you had to unlearn? Leave a comment and let me know. If you have a voiceover question, I'd love to hear it. You can go to voiceacting101.com slash ask to send it in, and hopefully we can hear it on a future podcast episode. I'll talk to you next time. Have a great week. Hey, thanks for checking out this episode of the podcast. If you want to see another video, there's one waiting for you right here, or you can subscribe to the YouTube channel down in the corner. Or if you want to learn the five steps to becoming a voice actor, check out this free guide. It's available to download from voiceacting101.com slash get started. All right, that's it. I'll talk to you next time. See ya.